Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Stephen. Your topic, gentlemen, is GPS, Global Positioning System. Is this advance in technology really that helpful? You know, we had a form of GPS when I was a kid. My mom would step out onto the front porch and yell, where the hell are you, Stephen? If I didn't answer immediately, she'd go straight, then turn left, then recalculate, then turn right, then arrive at my destination, and then slap me for making her walk unnecessarily. And I'm sure that many agree that modern GPS can be a pain too. So, whereas we are increasingly dependent on technology in our everyday lives, be it resolved that GPS should just get lost. Patrick, you're arguing for this, please. You have two minutes beginning right now. For those of you who do not use a GPS, I respect you. Because you make the choice of where you're going to go in life, which roads you're going to follow, which points of interest you're going to experience. The rest of you? You're sheep. I don't respect sheep. I eat sheep. I don't eat a lot of sheep anymore. You give me gas. But the point is, the point is GPS technology makes us lazy. The thing about GPS is Dave wants to steal our ability to read a map, to follow the stars, to be masters of our domain, to know our place in the world. My GPS, good people skills. Excusez-moi, Frolein, ouay the liquor store. <laughs> long as you got a tongue in your head, Dave, you're never really lost. <laughs> GPS robs us of our social responsibility. Instead of leashing our pets or, heaven forbid, holding our own child's hand, <laughs> GPSing disciples would argue to tag our children and pets with GPS. <laughs> our children and pets, Dave, stolen. By you! <laughs> Let me give you a little history of the GPS here, okay? It was made by the Americans in the 60s. Yeah, the Vietnam era. I don't think a GPS got them out of that one too well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> GPS! People want to make you feel reliant and inferior. That's why they give it that snooty British accent. Oh yeah, Dave, we can change it to an American one. But too many good, decent Canadian boys and girls died in the War of 1812 to let any American tell me where I can drive. <laughs> so let's recap. <laughs> GPS units are broken down American technology that arrogantly steal our pets and children. <laughs> Thank you. Patrick McKenna, everybody. <laughs> Woo. I'm so glad you recapped that, because I was losing track a little. <laughs> Now, I ask everybody to look directly east of me to David Hempstad, who's here to argue that GPS is taking mankind in the right direction. Please begin, David. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. You see, this is one of those cases where we have to drag the elderly <laughs> uh, kicking and screaming into a future they're afraid of. Refrigeration, uh, airplanes, computers, uh, indoor plumbing, Every time one of these things comes along, someone has to say to somebody like Pat, don't panic. It'll be okay. <laughs> Look, once upon a time, there was only one road, and you knew everyone who lived on it, and you all walked to school uphill, yada, yada. We've heard it. We've heard it, okay? <laughs> Perhaps if your generation had not enjoyed copulation so egregiously, <laughs> our generation might have had a chance to know that world, too. You couldn't keep it in your pants, and now, <laughs> now we don't know where anybody lives. <laughs> GPS allows us to know where we are at all times. GPS has taken the search out of search and rescue. We can find missing people, Pat. I know, I know, you had Lassie. <laughs> but Lassie is dead. <laughs> all of them. Do you love your wife, Pat? Sure you do. So you're down in Mexico. One day you drive out to see some ruins. Suddenly your wife goes into anaphylactic shock. What are you gonna do? Pull out some maps. <laughs> so tracing your finger, hang on, sweetie, just a second. No, you're gonna use the stars, Magellan? You think Orion's belt is gonna tell you where L'Hopital Santo Domingo is? Your wife is dying, man. And you're trying to prove a point? What is the, is it an insurance scam? Is that it? Are you letting her die? Are you trading your wife's love for a few bucks? Oh, Pat. GPS could help you find your heart. Why won't you let it? Dave Hempstead, everybody. Wow. 
I did not know there was so much at stake that we are directly to blame for Patrick's horniness. Makes me sad. And that his wife's life is in the balance. I had no idea this debate was this important. <laughs> it is time now for the bare knuckle round. This is your chance, debaters, to get your bearings straight. We are talking GPS, so please state your position and take this audience for a ride. Okay, Dave made this personal by bringing in my age, my family. I'm not like that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going there. I could say, maybe use the GPS to find some hair, but I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Pat. How'd you get here? Did you fly in? Isn't it fun when planes don't collide? They didn't have GPS and they weren't colliding well, before. You, oh, so what? You're okay with radar? Or you probably don't like radar either. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you churn your own butter? I mean, how far back do you want to take things? <laughs> Is that here? code? Okay, do you go to a grocery store? <laughs> because if it's code... No, no, I don't think it's a euphemism. Oh, I think okay. it's, no, it's actual butter churning. <laughs> really, I don't need a GPS to know where the butter is. It's in the bottom of the barrel and I churn it. Oh, I did it. You made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bare knuckle round, everybody. It is time now for the firing line, everybody. In my hand, I have a list of questions on GPS brought to you by GPS. Guatemalan prison showers, <laughs> where the only thing that gets lost is your innocence. <laughs> the first GPS was developed by the US Defense Department to keep track of what objects being launched from rail cars. <laughs> Patrick. Hobos? No, it's not. It's not hobo launch. I'm pretty sure no. it's hobos. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, I think you want a Wikipedia that one. It's it's going to be hobos. Actual answer. If anyone's anyone's listening anymore. Uh, answer to what? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. No, it's hobos. <laughs> no. <laughs> teen car tracking devices not only give parents the location of their teen's car, but what else? Uh, David. The precise location where trust ended. Good answer. We will give you a quarter of a point for that. Patrick? Uh, the police station the kid's being held at. That would be handy. It's the speed of the car. Can give you the speed of the car. It would be handy, wouldn't it? What a wonderful device. In GPS terminology, what is a track log? David? That's uh, what the uh, dog makes when it drags its bum across carpet. I had higher hopes for you, David, but the audience has given you two points. <laughs> it's an application allowing you to go back along the same route that you came from. Oh, so the dog could back up? Yes. <laughs> there you have it, the firing line, everybody. Well, our studio audience here will soon be voting for their favorite. But first, arguing that GPS is A-OK, -okay, here's 60 more precise seconds from David Hempstead. My GPS is my bestest, most knowledgeable friend in the whole world. It's incredible. You want to know where an Italian restaurant is? Bam, GPS knows. You uh, need a gas station? Bam, GPS. Hotel? Bam. Airport? Bam. Thanks to GPS, I know where things are, Pat. I don't know where things are. Don't you want me to know things? <laughs> I once was lost. But now am found, was blind, but now I see. It's beautiful to see, Pat. I can go anywhere in the world. And do you know how I get there, Pat? Me neither, but GPS does. <laughs> Dave Hempstead, everybody. An emotional plea for GPS. It's my best buddy. And now, once again, to convince us that with GPS, we've lost our way. Here's another minute, or around there, because he doesn't really know exactly where he is, from Patrick McKenna. What we've learned tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is that Dave Hempstead does not believe in the individual's choice. That's what we learned. And yes, I am old, and I'm old enough to know that life is about the journey and not the destination. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, babies don't need a GPS to find their way out of the womb. Santa doesn't need a GPS, and Moses didn't need a GPS. So unless you hate children, Christmas, and Jewish people, 
You don't need a GPS. Pat McKenna, everybody. Nice job. All right, that's it. It is now time for our studio audience to make their decision by applause. Who thinks that Pat McKenna's argument against GPS got the most comedic mileage? Patrick McKenna. Okay. Pretty good. And who thinks that David Hempstead's argument that we need GPS took all the right turns? David Hempstead. Wow. Wow. This audience has spoken. They want to know where they're going. GPS, David Hempstead wins it. Big hand for Dave Hempstead and Patrick McKenna, everybody. We'll be right back with more of the debaters.